In this module, we're going to take a look at the loops that the Java programming language offers. Java offers three loops. We have a while loop, a do while loop, and a for loop that is inherited from its C origins again. Let's create a project. We'll call this project loops. And the first thing we'll do is to insert in here some simple code for a basic while loop. Notice we start with a declared variable for int a. We set its value to zero. And then we say while a is less than 10. So the control of the while loop is a Boolean expression. And for as long as a remains less than 10, we will expect to keep going around the body of this loop. Then inside of the loop, we simply print out the value of a and we increment the value of a. When we're done, we print out finished the loop. Save that one and run the code. You'll notice down here that A prints out for 0 all the way through 9 because at the point at which A increments to 10, A is no longer less than 10 and it will drop out of the loop. That's the while loop in its most simple form. One important feature of the while loop is that it might execute no times at all. So for example, if we repeat the same code while a less than 10 and then print that out, it's probably no big surprise that because a is already 10 from here, this code will never execute the next time. So if we run this one, we'll see again, it counts to 10, says finish the loop, and then immediately says finish the second while loop because the condition never matches. The next type of loop that Java offers is the do while loop. In the case of the do while loop, here's the code for this one. Uh, we start out with the keyword do, and then we immediately enter our block. And inside the block, we do the code that we want to have happen repeatedly. So we can print out a is and the value of a, we can increment a, and then our while condition goes at the end. Now in this case, if we say while a less than 10, based on this preceding loop, one might wonder whether this was ever going to execute at all. You're probably familiar with the do while style of loop, and the major difference with this loop is that it always executes at least once. It comes in to the body of the loop, runs the body, and then tests the condition at the end of the loop. So even though a is already not less than 10, this will execute just the once before it discovers that. So if we run that one, we see the same code we had before, runs through to nine, says finish the loop, finish the second while loop, then it prints a is 10, and then says finish the do while loop. So a do while shouldn't be too difficult to use, just remember that it will always execute once. The third type of loop in Java is inherited again from the C programming language, and this one is the for loop. So here we have code that comes in and this says for, and then there are three sections to the body of the for loop itself. The sections are separated with semicolons, so there and there. There's the second semicolon, there's the first. The first part of the for loop is called the initialization section. It's quite common to declare variables in here, but they don't have to be declarations. They can simply be an initialization, or as you'll see in a moment, you can actually leave them out entirely. So this one declares a variable x and initializes its value to zero. The second piece inside the for loops control structure is a condition. This behaves as a while condition. So what this one says is, for as long as x is less than 10, then we will execute the body of the loop. And the third piece is this piece here. This is executed at the end of each body of the loop. So what will happen is every time that the body of the loop has completed and we get to this point here with the closing curly brace, it will execute this statement and then perform the test specified here and it will come back into the body of the loop if this conditional piece here is true. So in this case, we can reasonably expect that x is first printed out as 0, and then it will print through incrementing until it reaches 9, and then it will drop out of the for loop. So if we run that one, 
You can see down here, after the do while loop, X is zero, through X is nine, finished the for loop. Another piece of the for loop that is worth noticing is that in this declaration, if we create a variable declaration here, the scope of that variable is limited to within the curly braces and the body of this control structure. So here we have a statement, print out x, but you'll notice if we uncomment this, that this is actually an error because the variable x is out of scope at this point. It exists inside this block here and then inside the curly braces. By the time we reach this point, it has ceased to exist. So we can't do that one. Another feature of Java's for loop, again inherited from C, is that we do not actually have to provide all three of the elements of the control structure. So here you'll notice the first element, the initialization piece, and the last element are both empty. All that means is there is no initialization section and nothing special happens at the bottom of this. This actually becomes identical to a while loop that says while a less than 20. While a less than 20. You'll sometimes see people leave sections of this out, so it's important to realize that those can be left out. You don't have to, they can be left out independently. So if we run this version, you'll see now it's going to be picking up from where it previously left off with a. So a was already 10 as a result of the do while loop and now it picks up at 11 and goes through to 19, exactly as if it had been a while loop. The logical conclusion of leaving these pieces out is that in fact, we can leave all three pieces out. If you leave the middle conditional piece out, then this becomes effectively an unbounded infinite loop. So you'll often see this structure for parenthesis, semicolon, semicolon, close parenthesis. You can read that as forever because that's effectively what it will do. It doesn't set up any precondition. It doesn't do anything each time around the loop in this control structure, and the condition is considered always to be true. Well, that creates an infinite loop, which is why I suggest you can read it as forever. That allows us to introduce another feature of loops in Java, which is that we have a break statement that we can apply to a loop. If we execute break while inside a loop, what will happen is that we will jump out of that loop completely. So here, we start out by saying, go around this loop forever. But then we cheat, and internally we say, if A is greater than 25, then skip out of it. Otherwise, it would be a rather long-winded example, because it would never finish. So this time, we know that A was previously left as 20 from the preceding loop. So we'll count another five times. And when A is greater than 25, after we've printed out 25, then we will jump out of the loop and say, finish the third for loop. So we run that one. And here you'll see that we finish the second loop. A picks up at 20 prints through to 25 inclusive because we test after we've printed it out. But then we do in fact jump out and we execute this print of finish the third for loop at the end of it. So in this lesson, we looked at Java's three loops. We have the while loop, the do while loop, which is very similar to the while loop, but guarantees to execute its body at least once. And the for loop, which can simulate the do while loop but also allows us an initialization section and a place to put the behavior that occurs immediately at the end of each loop, setting it up ready for the next time round.